Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is a beautiful day. I think the sun has come out since I first got here this morning, and it is a good day to be together in this time of worship. It's my joy to welcome you into this hour of worship, whether you're joining us online or are here in the sanctuary. The Spirit of Christ unites us on this fourth Sunday of Easter. I would invite you to take a moment to register your attendance and let us know that you're with us. There are registration pads at the end of each row. You can pass down and back again. Or there's also a QR code in the bulletin that you can scan and register that way. Through that QR code, you can also share any prayer concerns, make your offering for the day, and participate in the service uh, in other ways. If you're worshiping online, there's a link you can place in the browser that will take you to the registration page. A few announcements as we gather this morning. If you are a college student or graduate student, we are inviting you to lunch after this service. It's one of our practices during the school year. And Pastor Amy will meet you back in the back in that room we call the Narthex. And it will be the church's treat and we'll take you to lunch as you begin to bring this semester to a close. Our confirmation class is on retreat this weekend. Uh, there are 12 of them, and uh, we are preparing to celebrate their confirmation on May 5th. So they're bringing this time of learning to a close, and I just invite you to be in prayer for them as they spend this weekend together building relationships with God and with each other. Our youth are invited to the youth council meeting right after this service at noon up in the youth area. All youth are invited, and lunch will be provided. Then later this afternoon at 5 p.m., there's a misprint in your bulletin, it's actually at 5 p.m. that Dana Trent, the author, will be with us in the Fourth Story Theater. She's written several books about the spiritual life, uh, the walk of faith, and she's a great writer. She was with us in 2018 as well, so I think you'll want to come and uh, participate in that. It will also be live streamed. We are um, going to have a grief support group that will start up on Monday, May 6th at 6 p.m. We'll meet for several weeks. We just recognize that we've had a lot of loss in our congregation and many among us are grieving the loss of loved ones and sometimes it's good to have a place where you can come and be with others on a similar journey and offer mutual support. So there's more information in the bulletin about that and uh, let us know if you'd like to sign up for that. Finally, at the end of the service, we're going to take a moment uh, to pray for our beloved church member, Tom Lee, um, who will be heading off to Charlotte, North Carolina, to be part of the General Conference of the United Methodist Church, which convenes on Tuesday morning. He is one of the lay delegates for our Tennessee Western Kentucky Conference, and so we are mindful that that gathering is beginning. I'll be sharing a little bit more about it tomorrow in my Monday meditation. But let us be in a spirit of prayer, of hope, um, as we gather in worship today and prepare to offer our prayers for him in that journey. We are on the fourth Sunday of Easter and we continue uh, to live in the spirit of the risen Christ as today we focus in on the letter of 1 John and what he has to teach us about the love of Christ. So let us open ourselves to this time of worship to be shaped by Christ's love.
join me in the call to worship found in your bulletin. Good Shepherd, you lead us in love. You guide us toward abundant life, even in the darkest valleys. You gather us in your presence to know your everlasting mercy and goodness. Trusting that God's love for us is unconditional and God's mercy is everlasting, let us make our confession with the confidence of children of God. God of goodness and mercy, we acknowledge that, like aimless sheep, we have gone astray from you. With prideful distraction, we have numbed our senses to the nudges of your spirit. Amidst uncertain paths, we have settled for the directions of our own strength, intellect, and resourcefulness. In our self-preservation, we have not joined you as you journey with the suffering ones of your flock. Forgive us, we pray, and by the power of your Holy Spirit, renew us in love that we might know the voice of our Good Shepherd calling us by name. And now, O oh God, we offer you our individual confessions in silence. Hear this good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Friends, as a forgiven and reconciled people, let us exchange signs of reconciliation and love. The peace of Christ be with you.
One of the great joys of the church is the baptism of children. And this morning, Bob and Ann Walker bring their daughter before God and before the community of faith for baptism. My family in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We're incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the spirit. And all of this is God's gift offered to us without price. Bob and Ann Walker, I ask you on behalf of the whole church these ancient questions of the faith. Do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, please say we do. We do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, say we do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to all people? If so, say we do. And will you nurture this child in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example, she may be guided to accept God's grace for herself, to profess her faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? If so, please say we will. And my friends in the congregation, do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? If so, please say, we do. We do. And will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include this beautiful child now before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround this child with a community of love and forgiveness that she may grow in service with others. We will pray for her to be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. Let us pray. Eternal God, when nothing else existed but chaos, your spirit swept across the dark waters and brought forth radiant light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. And after the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow as a sign of your everlasting promise. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you had promised. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. And he called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to go forth and make disciples of all nations. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and she who will receive it, to wash away sin and to clothe her in righteousness throughout all her life, that dying and being raised with Christ, she may share in Christ's final victory. All praise to you, eternal God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. What name have you given your daughter? Celeste Casey. Celeste Casey. She is not the first Celeste Casey to be baptized in this congregation. In fact, she is named for her great grandmother, Celeste Casey Reed, who used to sit over there, I believe, and worship every Sunday. She's also wearing her gown. So we celebrate many, many generations of blessing upon this sweet child. Celeste Casey, I baptize you in the name of God, the Father who created you, Christ, the Son who redeems you, and the Holy Spirit who will live within you and be your advocate and friend all the days of your life. All right, Miss Cece, we're going to walk a little closer to Mommy and Daddy. And we're going to all lay hands on you as together we pray for the gift of the Holy Spirit in your life. Celeste Casey, may the Holy Spirit work within you that being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ all the days of your beautiful life. Amen. I know you want to be held by Mommy and Daddy. We're going to take a little walk real quick because this is your church family. Look at them. Oh, 
They already love you. Can you believe it? And they are going to do everything they can to teach you how much God loves you and to help you learn what it means to follow Jesus. Some of them are going to be your Sunday school teachers, choir leaders, vacation Bible school leaders. One of them might even be your confirmation mentor in about 12 years. So we are going to listen to them as they make their promises to you. Is embody your spirit, open your bulletins to the commendation and welcome and face CC. Now it is our joy to welcome our new sister in Christ. Members of the household of God, I commend CC to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase her faith, confirm her hope, and perfect her in love. Thanks for all that God has already given you. And we welcome you in Christian love as members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant to participate faithfully in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, and in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Let's go back and see Mommy and Daddy. Please join me in the prayer for illumination found in your bulletin. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and the word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. A lesson from the New Testament, 1 John chapter 3, verses 16 through 24. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action, and by this, we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them, and by this, we know that he abides in us by the spirit that he has given us. The word of God for the people of God.
may be seated. And I would like to invite any children who are here who want to come join us up here for a minute together to come on down. And if you're worshiping online, just get a little closer to your screens and we'll be together that way. Come on down. Good morning, good morning. It's so good to see everybody. Good morning, good morning. See, we've got some sweaters back on. It's cold out there again today, isn't it? Glad to see you. Well, you may know that I love music. What you may not know is that I am learning to play the banjo. Do you know what a banjo is? It's kind of like a guitar, except it's round. And people play it really fast. When you get really good, it's like, blah, 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 blah. it's very fast. I'm not that good yet, and I can't play it that fast yet. And so if I want to play it that fast, if I want to be really good at playing the banjo, you know what I have to do? I have to practice. Exactly, Clara. I have to practice. And that takes time. I have to spend time with my banjo practicing. So I'm going to practice, and hopefully one day I'll bring my banjo to church, and we'll sing with my banjo. Will that be fun? It makes me think a little bit about what it means to love. So we just heard a scripture reading where someone wrote a letter to a congregation and was telling them to love each other and teaching them about love. But love is not always easy. Sometimes it can be hard to do the kind thing for someone. It may be hard to let your little sister have the bigger piece of cake or to open the door for someone when you're in a hurry. And love really takes practice. We have to try again and again to do the loving thing. And the more we practice love, I think the more loving we become and the easier it gets and the more beautiful it sounds. Let's pray together. Gracious God, we thank you so much that you love us, that we get to come to church and hear again and again how much you love us. We want to love you, and we want to love other people. And we're thankful that in church we can practice and learn how to love so that when we go out into the world, we can be kind and more loving each and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you all for listening. Three, four, and five-year-olds get to go to Children's Church. And if you're older than that, you can go back and sit with parents or grandparents or friends. When I was a young adult in the 90s, one of my favorite albums, that ages me also, was The Miseducation of Lauren Hill. Anybody have that CD or album? Yes, someone's doing that. Yes, it's just a fabulous CD, a fabulous album, and it's sort of all of a piece. One of the beautiful things she does on that album is to connect the songs to each other with these different audio clips. And the audio clips come from a classroom of students, probably young teenagers, who are talking with their teacher about love. And he keeps asking them, now what does it mean to be in love? What is love? And all of this conversation is interwoven into the great hip hop music of Lauryn Hill. that sort of poses the larger question, what, what really is love? And there's one of those audio clips that I just love, and it's a, a young guy, and he, you can almost imagine him sort of leaning back in his chair and saying, love is a feeling, and then everybody starts laughing, and then it moves on, because he can't finish the sentence. He thinks he knows what he wants to say, but he, he just can't put it into words. Love, it's hard to put into words to define. I heard a preacher tell a story one time, and I can't remember what preacher it was because, y'all, I'm old and I've heard a lot of sermons. But he was talking about one of his Sunday school teachers teaching kindergarten and inviting the kids to define love. And one of them said, love is that feeling you feel when you feel you're going to have a feeling you've never felt before. <laughs> and we get that feeling, don't we, that love is all about the feelings. That's what we see in the movies and on television and 
all of that. And it's a challenge, especially in the English language, to define love because we have one word, one word for love. I love God. I love my husband and my children. And I love coffee ice cream with chocolate chips. And it's not the same thing. But we have one word. Now, for those of you who've dug a little bit into the New Testament, you know that it's all written in Greek. And then in Greek, there are at least three words for love, so that helps. There's the word philios, from which we get friendship, the, the love of friendship. There's eros, which is romantic love, the falling in love, infatuation, attraction to another person. And then there is agape. And agape love is what we hear the most about in the Gospels and in the New Testament. John 3.16, for God so loved the world. That's agape. Jesus saying, love one another as I have loved you, that is agape. And it is this agape love that the writer of 1 John is instructing and inviting his congregation to practice. Practice agape love. So what is the nature of agape love? Well, the writer of 1 John gives us some clues, even in the verses that we have just heard. He said, we know love by this, that he, Jesus, laid down his life for us. And so we ought to lay down our lives for one another. So there is, to agape, some sort of laying down of the self, putting aside our own comforts, our own security, our own preferences and conveniences for the sake of another. Some of you are reading this book that we've invited you to read alongside us during this season of Easter, Love is the Way, by Bishop Michael Curry. Uh, he preached at the royal wedding, if some of you might recognize his face. But he defines agape love very simply and beautifully, and I wanted to make sure I got it right in his own words. He says, love is a commitment to seek the good and to work for the good and welfare of others. Working for the good, for the welfare of others. And he gives several examples in this chapter of his book. He talks about Fannie Lou Hamer who was born to a family of sharecroppers, 20 children, and she stopped going to school so that she could work on the farm, setting aside herself in order to help her family. In 1961, she was sent to the hospital for a minor procedure, and without her knowledge, without her consent, she was sterilized. And out of her anger and her longing to have a voice and to have power in her life, she wanted to, to register to vote and to encourage her neighbors to vote. And for that, registering to vote, she was beaten by the Ku Klux Klan, even by the police, but she never gave up her fight. And it wasn't just for herself, it was for others. She put her life on the line, put her body on the line for the sake of others. Bishop Curry also talks about Frances Perkins, who was a woman born into privilege and wealth, and she was going about her life and her education when one day as she was walking through the streets of New York, she saw a factory that had caught on fire and people were jumping out of the windows. And from that experience, she was inspired to work for the welfare of laborers in this country. She became the Secretary of Labor during FDR's administration, and because of her work, we have minimum wage and we have 40-hour work weeks. And she gave her life, gave up much of her privilege and the comfortable life she could have had for the sake of others. That's agape. He talks about William Wilberforce, who dedicated his life to ending the institution of slavery in England. Years and years of fight and struggle and even persecution to do that for the sake of others. So I read this chapter in his book and I'm so inspired by heroic figures like that who have literally changed history through the practice of agape. And yet I think, I'm I'm not a hero like that. 
I'm not likely to make the headlines or, or be in a history book or have generations down the road talking about me giving up my life for the sake of others and accomplishing these sorts of big things. But I don't think that's all that agape is about. Agape, the writer of 1 John, is telling his congregation is to be lived out every single day in every ordinary choice that we make. I came across a reflection not too long ago that has really stuck with me and reminded me of how ordinary and mundane these choices of love can be. And so I've asked Will to read the exact words of a man named Carlo Caretto, who was a Catholic priest, and he was spending some time in a monastery to have time away for prayer, and he had this experience that that taught him something about love. So I thought it'd be interesting to hear it in another voice and to hear Carlo Caretto's exact words. So Will's going to read it for us. In our community the other day, there was not much coffee. Coffee does me good here in the desert. It helps me. I'm old. I was worried about not having any, about spending a few hours feeling dull and weak. And so without perceiving the evil I was doing, I went into the kitchen before the others and drank up all that was left. Afterwards, having suffered all day and made my confession, I thought in shame of my selfishness, of the eve with which I had excluded excluded my two brothers from those black, bitter remains. It seems a tiny thing, yet in that cup of coffee, taken and not shared with my brothers, is the root of all the evil which disturbs us, the poison of all the arrogance which selfishness, riches, and power create. The difference between me and Jesus is right here in an affair that seems simple, but it isn't at all. After a whole lifetime, it is still there to make you think. Jesus would have left the coffee for his brothers. I excluded my brothers. No, it isn't easy to live with hearts like ours. Let us confess it. And I confess I have not yet drank your coffee, but it will happen. (laughs) I'll be on the lookout. Okay, what? The little decision to see this much coffee left in the pot and to think I'm taking it for myself instead of leaving it for his brothers. It's such a little thing. I can hardly blame him for doing that. But he felt in that little decision that love was at stake and he made the wrong choice. He didn't choose agape love. How many times throughout the day are there choices in front of me, in front of you, to choose the good of the other instead of ourselves? And how many times do we make the wrong choice? But there's good news. God is always with us. And we can learn from every choice that we make, whether we make the right choice or the wrong choice. Last week, A week ago, Saturday, the mother of a dear friend of mine had passed away, and we celebrated her funeral just down the street at St. George's. And several friends of mine from high school who came in town for the service. And on Friday afternoon, I got a text from my friend Julia and said, hey, can I crash at your house for two days? Okay, where are my introverts at? You know how it feels, right? Like, oh, Okay, uh, i got to think about this. And Julia, if you're watching, it's not about you. It could have been the Pope, it could have been Steve Martin, and I would still have been thinking, ah, I'm not sure I want to do this. But I took a few moments, I took a few deep breaths, I texted David, made sure it was okay with him, and then it came to me, yes, yes, of course. But in that moment, I had to wrestle with my little small self and come to the agape choice. And boy, am I glad I did, because we had a wonderful weekend. We sat around the table on Saturday night and talked and talked and laughed. And by the end of the weekend, I was not depleted like I thought I was going to be. I was filled again, and it was a gift and a blessing. But I think these little kinds of daily experiences are our training ground for agape. 
Because you see what the writer of 1 John says, that we are called to love, to agape, in truth and in action. That we are called to act out of love, to work for the good of the other. But that that action must also come from the heart. I can make the right choice, but I can be resentful about it. Or I can want a reward for it. But God is ever working in us to move us to that congruence of loving action and loving heart. And it takes a lifetime of daily choices and prayer and reflection. It's one John Wesley called sanctification, a lifetime of growing ever deeper in love with God, with neighbor, and with self. And we are never finished we are always a work in progress. But the good news is we have a place and a people among whom to practice. This is what the church is and can be for us. This is our practice field, our rehearsal hall, where we can come and practice together among people who ought to be ready with forgiveness when we mess up, we can coach one another, offer feedback in love to one another, and prepare ourselves to go back out into the world because that's where we are ultimately sent. The letter of 1 John is focused in, in many ways, on what one commentary called intramural love, love within the church, love within the walls, love one another so that can go back out in the world and shine the loving light of Christ in those places that do not know love. And so, my friends, we gather in person or online. We hear the good news that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We receive that love for ourselves. We practice that love with each other. And then we go out into the world to embody Christ's agape. And I thank God to be part of this family of faith, this team, this orchestra to practice with each and every week. Thanks be to God. In response to the gospel, I invite you to rise in body or in spirit and to join me in the affirmation of faith. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to take your seats. At this moment of our liturgy, we have the opportunity to practice agape love in the lifting up both ways God is calling us to be in solidarity of joy and grief with our brothers and sisters in this congregation. If you would like to let our pastoral team and our church know of prayer concerns, I invite you to follow the Contact Us link on our website or to fill out the gray card, which is in the pew in front of you, and leave that gray card in the offering basket here in a few moments. Also want to direct your attention to the Praying With Us portion of your bulletin. It will list the concerns I lift up here today, and it will also invite you into other ways that you can uh, journey with those persons as they both celebrate uh, new life and also mourn passing to the communion of saints for beloved ones. We do today celebrate uh, two births within the life of our congregation, that Charlotte Grace Calci was born on January 19th to Sarah and Stephen Calci. She's also welcomed by her big sister, Claire. 
Bennett Emery Riveling was born on March 17th to Emily Grace and Michael. He is also welcomed by big sister Margot. There are a number of folks in our community who are grieving these days. Especially we lift up the life of Margaret Peggy Kasparis Gruss, who passed away on April 7th. Services will be held in the sanctuary on June 13th at 2.30 in the afternoon. Visitation will precede the service beginning at 1.30. We come together in solidarity with Aaron, Dave, and Miles Racine as they mourn the death of Aaron's aunt, Aunt Pierre, who passed away on April 9th. We come alongside Martha Harbuck and her family as they mourn the death of her sister-in-law, Becky Harbuck. For John and Linda Murdoch and their family as they mourn the death of John's mother, Joanne Murdoch Cromer, who passed away in Birmingham, Alabama on Sunday, April 14th. Services will be held at a later date in Memphis, Tennessee. And finally, we grieve with Helen and Rick and Isabel and Vivian Sanders as they mourn the death of Helen's mother, Anne DeZykes, who passed away on April 9th in Santa Cruz, California. Services are planned for a later date. Last week, our youth so beautifully led us in our prayers of the people. They invited us into the petition of Lord in your love, and the congregation responds, hear our prayer. So we will continue in that practice this day. When I say Lord in your love, I invite you to respond, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Give ear, O shepherd of Jerusalem, you who lead Joseph like a flock. Stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine that we might be saved. Saving God, we join in this prayer of our ancestors, asking you to lead us into the fullness of your joyous, life-giving love. As you promise to lead us by still waters, we ask that your spirit would pave a way through the busyness and distraction of our lives to create a space for us to be still with you and to rest in your restoring grace. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. In our longing and in our wanting, we pray that you would protect us from false loves that assault our attention and seek to direct our desire. Stir up our desire for Jesus and for the desires of the one who lays down his life, for justice for the oppressed, release for the captive, wholeness for the unwell, forgiveness for the sinner, peace between all nations. Lord, in your love. In our grieving, in our suffering, and in our dying, grant us the strength to raise up our heads and lift up our hearts to trust in your abiding comfort. Sustain those whose days are filled with tears. Assure those who near death with the hope of eternal life and everlasting reunion with their beloved ones. In the power of your Holy Spirit, our advocate, draw us together that we would be present with those whom we know are isolated or are feeling alone. Fill our tables with surprising friends that we might overflow with your mercy and goodness all of the days of our life. Lord, in your love, in all our hopes, we join our voices with your son, the good shepherd, who is teaching us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In this community, we have the gracious privilege of practicing generosity and sharing our gifts as an offering to God and sharing our gifts as an offering to this community and as a gift to the world. Let us give this day in response to the good and gracious love of God. I invite you, if you feel compelled to give, uh, to give either online by following the appropriate link, by filling uh, or by leaving your offering in the offering plates as they are passed, or going to the QR code that is listed in your bulletin, which will 
direct you to our website and the page where you can give. Let us give in response to God's gracious provision shared and trusted to us.
to be seated for just a moment, and I'm going to invite Tom Lee to come forward. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning of the service, on Tuesday morning, the General Conference of the United Methodist Church will convene for the 2020 General Conference, which got postponed until 2024. And uh, I want to take a moment to, to pray with and for Tom, who is a lay delegate from the Tennessee Western Kentucky Annual Conference and is also a nominee for the Judicial Council, which is basically the Supreme Court of the United Methodist Church. And so he will be going to Charlotte for the next 10 days to represent our conference, to represent our congregation, to represent the mission of the church. And before we pray with him, I'd love to invite anyone who feels led to come forward and join Will and me as we lay hands on Tom for that prayer. If you have a prayer in your heart for general conference, um, if you are a particular supporter of Tom and his work, um, if you just feel led by the Spirit to come on um, and lay hands on him as we prepare to pray. We are, um, I will be writing my Monday meditation tomorrow uh, and sending out some links about ways that you can keep up with what's happening over the next few days. Uh, but we want to send Tom off in a spirit of hope and a spirit of change and in the Spirit. So if you would kneel at the rail and everyone who's gathered, thank you so much for coming down. Your hands represent all of our hands and hearts. And let us pray together. God of the cosmos, God who gave birth to the church through the resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, you are the God of the church universal. You are the God of the United Methodist Church and the God of West End United Methodist Church. We thank you for this particular congregation where we can learn and practice love with and for one another. And we thank you for the United Methodist Church and the witness that it has borne for generations. But you know, O oh God, that we have some troubles and some struggles. And as the global representatives gather over the next two weeks, we pray for them. We pray that your spirit will make a way forward for the future of your church. We pray especially today for our beloved church member, Tom Lee. Give him wisdom and grace. Empower his spirit with your love and boldness. And God, we dare to pray the door would be opened for West End to live fully into the mission you call us into, that your United Methodist Church would open our arms and doors wide to all people for marriage and ordination and the following of your lead, that your love would be our guide. And so send us forth with hope. Send Tom forth with hope as together we seek to live into your calling as your church. We place it all in your hands, O oh God. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 And now we invite you to stand as you're able and join with us in singing our closing hymn, which reminds us of the unity and oneness of Christ's church.
We have experienced together today the tie that binds, the deep and abiding agape love of our God. So let us go forth to bear witness to the love of God in this world so that those to whom love is a stranger will find in us generous friends. Go in peace.